Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic and this is another reaction to the Monogatari series and it is Nico Monogatari episode 1. You know what to do, as always, if you want to see the reaction itself, go down into my descriptions, there is a link, you just replace the circumflex dot parts with real dots and enjoy the reaction. Once you've done, feel free to come back here, hear out my thoughts about this episode. So, see you soon. For those that came back, welcome back. Now. That was a nice one. Interesting episode. And as I already guessed, it is um, in the timeline before Baku Monogatari. So it is um, the history of Aragi and Hanekava, which is a nice one. Um, I struggled a bit with recording today. This is why this one is a little bit delayed for my patrons, um, which they will have realized, I guess. Uh, because we do have temperatures here, which are way too high for me. And thus I have my recording equipment in a very, very little room here. And I have two incredibly hot um, lights who shine on me so that the quality of the recording is better. I was not able to record during day. I tried it and I had to stop after like 30 seconds because I was melting. So I record this right now in the middle of the night. It is past 12 so it's already the next day that's why um it was delayed i hope you can understand it. and still it's way too hot so now back to the episode um it is the story as it seems of aragi's first love which as we already know is hanekava um and i guess we will have the background story on how he for the first time healed her, helped her in the meaning of uh, Tsubasa cat, being bitten and drained away by um, his little vampire girl. Now, it brings in more information because it is the first time that he is ever in love. It brings um, the background information about those two very important characters um, and maybe a bit why they act the way they do, why Hanekava is not... Um, answering to his love or maybe he's not confessing his love i'm not completely sure about that uh the intro and the outro however um gave already some clues i think um but before i go into this episode in gen uh, in more specific i wanted to talk about one two general things that i realized in this um episode and that's why i took this picture here um the graphics changed a bit not very much but it changed a bit um, I'm okay with it, but I feel they simplified graphics way more than in the first two seasons. I remember when I watched the first Bakamonogatari episode that I mentioned that um, the change of a very simple graphics and sometimes even background graphics missing completely to then very detailed close-up shots of um, eyes of parts of the face and so on um, was interesting but strange um, they are doing the same thing here again so I guess it's they're trying to kind of um, go back into the flow of the Bakamonogatari gra uh, graphics although it seems to me as though they way more oversimplify um, as example in this picture here if you see it looks like a very very um, easily sketched down graphic for those two characters which brings it into a little bit of comedic part you know a bit of slapstick like as it is here um while still transporting the story but i'm not sure if i like it it's not that i say i will i do not like it at all it is just i was used to the graphics from Nis uh, nisamonogatari and for me it feels as though they have lowered themselves a bit here um, especially because some of the characters look facially seen flat in some of the shots. I commented that when Hanekava was walking. So um, her face looks extremely different in some shots. Uh, same for the sisters as well. Um, there are some shots in one graphic style way they are way more um, edgy, you know, very uh, clunky from the face. While, on the other hand, there are those close-up shots of uh, lips and eyes and everything, 
where they are very very detailed and um, look really good so it's strange i'm not sure where this is going i will look on for it maybe uh, they maybe it's just art you know so that's one thing the other thing um in the background music is running all the time i realize that and it's still good so that's the way it was before intro and outro seem to be interesting again and already gave the clue that's about Hanukkah, but there was a cat in. And there's a cat in this series, which I have never seen before, so no idea where this one comes from. So let's jump into the story. The uh, whole episode started off, first thing I realized was a cat shadow running through. So I knew it had to be about Hanukkah somehow. Um, and we started off with Tsukihi, uh, with a little sister, trying to murder her brother while he's sleeping. Um, arguing that she tries the uh, concept of being a Yandere, if I pronounce that correctly, sorry, uh, Yandere, whatever, um, because people are not sure what kind of type she is. So I guess this is a little bow to uh, the community as well. Um, she's a, a bit nuts here, no question there. We are in the beginning of Golden Week, so it is before the Bakamonogatari timeline. Um, and then we went into the intro, which um, was interesting because we had the theme of a guitar in the intro, which, as far, far as I remember, I had no connection with Hanekava before, except for her braids, uh, the um, cat pieces she had in there, sometimes I think had like this guitar on it as well, but I might be wrong. Um, but I don't remember seeing her with a music instrument at all before. So I guess there's maybe more to come about this, which would be interesting to see if she's playing a guitar, for example. Um, she, uh, we had the text of the intro, which, as we, as I know, might give clues about the storyline. Which is a bit strange now, because we know some of the things that are happening due to the Bakamanogatari storyline already. Um, and it is mainly, again, about love and about, I think, like, first love. Um, the fact that she, I guess it is from her point of view, is not able to answer to the love she realizes. Um, so I guess it is from her point of view saying that she realizes Aragi has feelings for her and she really likes it and it gives her energy. Um, uh, it gives her hope, but she doesn't find the strength or not at the moment at least to reach for the hand that is given to her. So, which is, if this would be correct, is very much fitting to what we know of her. The fact that she does somehow love him and um, is aware that he loves her, but it's just not the right time. That's a harsh one, but I mean, stuff like that happens. Um, I know from personal life, there are always persons in your life where you are looking out for if there might be a possibility for a relationship, but whenever one of you is in a relationship, the other is single and the other way around. So you are always like bouncing around each other, but you're never finding the time. It's Sometimes fate is cruel. That's the way it is. Um, so I guess maybe it's about that here. Um, after the intro, we had him talking on with his little sister about the fact that he might be interested in a girl in his class. And uh, it seems it's the first time. So his sister's going crazy. Which I can relate to. <laughs> and... Um, He's not willing to say who she is, but he says, let's just call her H. So it's Hanukkah. Um, and we now have two very... Two things that are going on. The one thing is he's talking about how he feels, and I really like that. Um, because I can relate to a lot of those things he's saying. And on the other hand, he is entering his creep mode from time to time. So... Um, he asked his sister, how do you know that you love? And I can so relate to this question. Um, I'm kind of, I don't know. On the one hand, I'm always a bit um, 
grumpy about people who are very easily falling in love. On the other hand, I uh, wouldn't say adore them. I um I envy them for the ability. Um, so it's this mix. On the one hand, I'm like you're so happy that you are loving so fast and easily. On the other hand, thus those um, who fall in love very easily very often get disappointed because you know it's not that everyone is perfect for each other um on the other hand i say like um, well should have taken more time not that you could control it so um i can understand his questions because i often in my life felt the same um that i was like hmm is there more with this person do i have deeper feelings or not exactly the question that he has so from a neutral to the love point where am i am i just liking this person or do i really love this person already and um, so i can see his questions and thus he has no experience with it he asked those he kind of trusts which is his sisters um who seem to have strangely enough more um experience with the matter and um yeah well it's not like at least his little sister can give him really much of an idea here i mean um her answers are vague at the best it's like well you just know yeah but that's a problem what if you don't so um but there we come back to the things where i say i can relate to and i really liked it um he explains some things what he feels what he is doing which is different from other times so those those typical things sitting in the classroom and watching her instead of um, the uh, teacher and what he should watch so yeah you're may more interested in her that's an indicator um waiting on the corner on the way to school or from school to maybe eventually catch a glimpse on her well okay that's all although a bit creepy very much already a uh, more than just a clue it's a clear hint there's more and uh, and that's a strange one uh when wanting to buy um adult magazines thinking about what she would think about it and not buying them so this is already one step further so you want to be a better person in the way you think it would be better to um be liked by her so yes in my opinion, yes, there is, um, if you want to call it love or if you want to call it a deeper interest in the person, there is something. That is clear. So I like that. And I was a little bit pissed about the fact that they then later on brushed it off as you just think you love her because you are sexually frustrated. And that's like, no man, the things before were indicators for love. The other things about the boobs is, um, well, young adults in hormone stress and a raggy in specifics. So, I think he does, my opinion. Um, he then, well, they then talked about the fact that, well, he went into the creep mode about he likes some specific body parts. Which I can understand, they're pretty prominent in the pictures we've seen. And, um, his sister, <laughs> well, his sister made this test, which was just stupid. Um, so touch mine instead, and she thought he wouldn't because he's a sister. So then, I don't know, that was just, well, sure, he did. I mean, not much of a surprise. I have to remember, he is the Araragi we had in the Bakamonogatari series in the beginning. He has calmed down partially a bit, just partially. Um, in other ways, not. Um, and so he's before the development of being a more responsible person when it comes to some things, at least. Um, so he grabbed a handful and um, threw her around through the room or neither. So that was pretty harsh and as deserved she, he got slapped um i mean it's not like it those are handlebars you can use to throw people around so due to this incident they came to the wrong conclusion that his sexual frustration leads him to believing he loves hanukava 
Uh, that's a bit, well, as I said, wrong conclusion in my opinion. But, um, well, if you want to go with that. And then we heard the one thing that is really harsh. So he threw away all his magazines he had because he thought he would have to do it to be more the guy that Honeycover would find interesting. He steps further than you should normally be. You do that when the girl wants to meet you, wants to visit you, like when you're a young one. If you're older, <laughs> and if you're much older, it's more like, hey, either you love me or you don't, so if you don't like it, then we're not meant for each other. However, that was a, str a strange thing. Um, and they agreed that, that he should buy new stuff instead of groping his sisters. Which I think would be still... Yeah, it's a better option. Yeah. Um, and then we went... Ended this scene. Thank God. And uh, went for a scene with Karen. Who is in full sports activity mode. Running a marathon and sweating profoundly. Uh, <laughs> um, so they wanted to show that she is the sports canon that we know. In the past. And she has the long hair which I really like. I mean, I'm still crying about her cutting them off. Um, however, what was one thing that hit me in this ep in this moment, in this scene, was that she, without a second thought, undresses in front of her brother. So she is, after doing sports, just simply undressing in front of him, cleaning herself up, I guess, um, refreshing herself. So um, that shows, at least me, how close though this family is in the meaning of that they are not shy around each other about their body. So that explains a bit more the um, willingness of our Ragi to grab and grope his sisters as well. It's because they are way closer bodily with each other than a normal family, I guess, should and would be. Um, yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. Let me just check. I wrote down quite a lot about the graphics, but I had that already. Oh yeah, and then we went to the uh, we went to meet Hanekava finally. So um, in the end, we heard things again that we knew already from the old storylines. So this is the first time that he heard of the fact that he uh, that she got hit by her stepdad, by her stepfather, that she has not, um, that she's not living with her real parents because uh, they are not there anymore. Instead, she's living with a stepfather and a stepmother. So this strange setup of a family. Um, and she, when, when she greeted him, I think she seemed way more jolly than I had her in the past. Um, so she was not like, hello, Aragi. She was like, hey, yeah, like very flippy, um, active. That changed later on due to the fa uh, things that they talked about. But she seemed more open, if I could say so. Um, he went into creep mode and tried to raise her skirt and whatever, why so ever. Um, but they talked a pretty honest and, um, hard talk. And in the end, she was talking about her family and the background that she has, why she got this injury in her face. And um, that was something we discussed in the past already. So he wants to kind of help her or he tries to at least make it clear to her that this is not good. And she is completely in, I wouldn't say in denial, but she is defending her father. Um, and I wrote down some of those things and they are the typical things you tend to hear or you think you hear when people are defending those um, insulting them and hurting them in their own family. It's those, um, it's just once, it's um, not happening again, uh, he, uh, he was intimidated by me, um, I made something wrong and this, as she explained that he was the older one but she, uh, she spoke to him as though she's more grown up so she claims to have made a mistake um the don't tell anyone so the fear of other people finding out it's a very very typical thing of uh, domestic violence um those who are 
uh, injured by domestic violence, who are hit and um, beaten up, are very often those who try to hide it because they are ashamed of it. And they are worried about losing the family. Um, I mean, she does not have the best family, but it is at least, possibly in her point of view, at least somewhat of a family. Although she herself claimed they wouldn't even realize if she completely loses her hair and they possibly don't even know what she looks like. So she's aware that's a cra crappy family, but it is the one that she has at least. So she really tries to defend the things that happened. Although she talked about it, um, because Aragi clear, uh, said that to a friend you could say it. So I think this to a friend by doing saying so he said I am your friend I'm willing to be your friend and I think that lured her out that um, I guess the possibility of having a friend I guess she does not have many friends at this moment mm. so she told him and then she asked him not to tell anyone and this is where it changed because she then promised to do anything if he doesn't talk so we changed into this three to five minutes of full creep mode of Araragi thinking about options he has now. Like, um, what can I make her do? What will I make her do? So many options. And he was um, completely out of it. He completely forgot what they talked about before, what his name was. No question, it's overplayed. But it's, um, although it's on the one hand funny, it removes and she even stated it, it removes the sincerity of the moment before, what they talked about, about domestic violence. Um, and he even says, sincerity, never heard of it. Um, so he was in this mood, and it was this mix-up of funny and entertaining, and that's just wrong, you know? However, seeing what he then chose in the end... You have to give it to him. You have to like him for it. It's um, He could have asked for stuff. And knowing what he likes on her. In uh, some ways specifically. It, I wouldn't have been surprised if he would have asked for a grab or a view. Um, but instead he asked for licking uh, the wound. Which on the first hand is creepy. Yes, I was like. Bleh. But realizing what it means. That it heals. He could have asked for something for his benefit and instead he asked for something which benefited her in the meaning of he healed her wound. Sure in the long run he will ha he made brownie points with that. You know he definitely got plus points for it there's no question but I think that's not what he thought about. He really just wanted to help and um, by doing so that's why the episode ends the way it does when he's in his room and says it all comes crushing down on him, it got worse. He possibly realized that there is more gen than just bodily and sexuality problems he has. It is, he really wants to help her, he really likes her. So, what now? And seeing that she has problems in her family... If you like someone very much, you care about him, or her in this case. Um, and even when asked not to sell, uh, say something to anyone, you want to help. You want to improve the life of the other person. So that's the position he's in now. Um, so what, do you, what will he do? I'm not sure. He promised not to tell. Uh, specifically not his family. But no one in general. Um, I don't see many points what he can do. Sure, he could talk to the family, but in most cases, this just makes it worse. Um, he could try to, I don't know, like hang around with her a bit more so she is more away from the family. But really, a much of help you cannot do. In case of domestic violence, I don't know, man. But that's just one side of the medal. The other is that he loves her, that he likes her at least a lot. So confess to her about it, confess to yourself about it, um, and think about what now. That's it where we are. So this is where we ended off this episode. I like it. It's, 
it shows background about those characters, about his um, point of view and uh, past. And, well, three more episodes to go for this one. So, looking forward. I hope you liked that one. I did for sure. And you know what to do, as always. If you want to, please leave a comment, like or subscribe, uh, visit my other pages. And I will see you soon on the next episode. Until then, my name is Relax and Panic. Goodbye and out.